And welcome everybody, Tony Porter, Cards and Dice TV. And this is 1990 Mets action versus the Pittsburgh Pirates. You know that in 1990, the Mets won 91 games and ended up in second place, four games behind the Pirates. So I'm replaying some of those September, October games against the Pirates, see how the Mets do and see the, uh, learn a little bit about the Pirates and their team and, and figure out exactly what they had that the Mets didn't. And I'm quickly noticing that the Pirates have uh, somewhat more power or they're just hitting more power numbers. So I'm not sure which one it is. So uh, we are in the top of the fourth. This is the second round of three innings that I'm playing for the, the Learn to Play tutorial. It's uh, History Maker Baseball. It's really a, a fun game. And uh, I was able to get uh, um, Keith, the owner, um, was uh, sent me, was nice enough to send me the 1990 um, umpire. So we have a whole new crew. I replaced the, the old crew. Uh, so it's going to be McSherry at first base, uh, Don Denkinger at second base, Randy Marsh at third base, and behind the plate is Joe West. And he's still around. You see him all the time. So let's do this. Let's get started, and let's play some History Maker Baseball. It's Neil Heaton. Now, Neil Heaton is an interesting story because he was picked up uh, uh, a late a season acquisition and pitched a couple of months and really was lights out from the, um, the stats that I saw. Zane Smith and uh, Neil Heaton were both uh, pitched outstandingly down the stretch for the Pittsburgh Pirates. And uh, we're right about to get started. I just want to bring up the, the box score because in case I have to make any changes, I kind of want to keep it as close to realistic as possible within reason. So I like to do that. And I've got a video where I show how I prepare for the games. Sometimes I, I won't pre prepare. I'll just bring up the box score and keep it live and kind of as I play, I look at the box score and I, and I look at the, the game after. It depends on, on how the game develops and what exactly I need. This is the second game of a doubleheader played September 5th, Wednesday, September 5th, 1990. What were you doing September 5th, 1990? Uh, the Mets are 77 and 58 going after this game. And uh, Mets lose it 3-1. to one. So... And let me look at, at Smith's, uh, Heaton, rather, Heaton's season that year. He's a star, a, a semi-star. And in 1990, he was had a 3.45 ERA, so he pitched well. Um, in 24 games started, he was 12-9, 1990. But there's another pitcher. Zane Smith was really lights out. And there's a pitcher that pitches in the next game, the following day, Thursday's game. Let me look and see. I don't know. We will there. I can't, I can't remember who the uh, – there was a pitcher that was really, really impressive. Now, Julio Valera is actually did not do well. He pitched in only three games. I don't even think I have him. I don't even know if, that I have his card. I might just have to – He's a terrible pitcher, by the way. He had a 70 ERA. So I, in three starts, I doubt his card is available. So I'll have to improvise his card. That's easy enough to do with History Maker Baseball. There's actually a little uh, uh, handout that you pick up for about $9, and it teaches you how to make the cards, which is kind of cool. All right, so let's start the game. Enough with the talk. And uh, Neil Heaton against Charlie O'Brien. Charlie O'Brien today. Is 0 for 1 with a strikeout. We're in the top of the fourth inning, and the score, which I haven't mentioned, is 4 to, four to 1 Pirates. And that is a 2 2 6. That's how you read that. Oh, I'm sorry, 2 6 6, excuse me, with a, with a bullet. And uh, 2 6 6, it's going to say runner on first is thrown out. There's nobody on first. Leadoff batter, yes. So he lines a single. The center field. So Charlie O has singled. And the pitcher is up, which we, we will let him bat at this point. 
still a little bit too early to start making changes, so we're going to let uh, Bobby Ojeda bat. See what he does. Here's the pitch, and that's a 346 with a bullet. That's going to force the flip the book over. 346. It's a blank for the pitcher. Eager. Usually pitchers are eager, and he is, and he pops it up to shallow center. Racing in is the center fielder, R.J. Reynolds, for out number one. And just uh, so you know how I'm keeping score, let me just quickly show you. Now, I did a video on score sheets, and this scored really low, but it's still a good score sheet. Now, I had to adjust. I, you have to write small, but it's I have a lot of these, so I'm kind of using them. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. Who's up now? It is Tommy Herr with one out and one on. And he's a scrapper. How about a hit and run here? Let's see where that is. I have a chart, right? There's a bump. Oh, hit and run right there. Roll on main chart just as it follows. Runners advance one base on any ground out, two base on any hit. Any line out becomes a double play. Any home run becomes a strikeout. If a batter walks or strikes out, runner on first must attempt to steal second. Roll the side of that to see if he makes it. Love it. So simple. Just, you know, I don't need seven pages of charts for a hit and run. All right, there it goes, and it's a 246. 246 with no bullet. Let's see what that's going to lead us to. Control, it's a ground out to the pitcher, so the runner advances one base. Really, that's why you do it. That's why you call a hit and run, just to, to, uh, to avoid a double play. So here's Dave Magadan with two outs and a runner on second base. And it's a 2-3-4. And a two, three, four, run around base, play drama. Let's see what happens. Play drama. And a roll 2d6. And that's a 24. 24, wild pitcher. He is not wild. Otherwise, it's a high and outside ball. But that takes us to a chart. And this is one chart that I cannot. Uh, I can't. I don't remember that color. And Oh, it's a ball or strike reading. What does that exactly mean? That's one thing. That I don't know that orange color. What I do when I started playing this, I just kind of ignore certain things. Like if you don't know what the result is, if you don't understand it, just ignore it. Let me see where those colors are. Let me see if I can find that. It's like a peach color. A ball and strike result. Okay, orange. Go to appropriate umpire mini chart. Hmm. So let's go to the mini charts. So, okay, so runner on, where was the runner? The runner's on second base. So with a runner on second, let's roll on the mini chart. Let's do that. And it's a 26 and a 26, respectful umpire at home. Or respect, I'm sorry, respectful, respected umpire at home. No, Joe West is semi lenient and questionable. So it says batter singles, if that were the case, since it's, it isn't. Other umpires call safe. And okay, okay, wait a second. Uh, respected umpire at home. The answer is no. So it's batter singles, base runner breaks for home, and he is out. Other umpire calls safe at home, batter to second. Okay, so it's going to be a base hit up the middle, and they're waving Charlie O'Brien home, and he's going to he's going to slide in, and the tag is not in time, and heading for second is Dave Magadan. So it's an RBI single for Dave Magadan here with two outs in the top of the fourth inning, and both uh, Neil Heaton and the catcher. Uh, Don Slot are arguing with the umpire, and out comes the manager. They don't like the call. There's no replay, so you can't do anything about that. And he's at second base on the throw. 
And here comes Greg Jeffries. It's four to two now. All right. So let's see what happens here. Four to two. And let's roll. Neil Heaton versus Greg Jeffries. The tying run is at the plate right here for the Mets. And that's a 134 with a bullet. A 134 and a bullet is going to be a gold catcher. There's no gold ca catcher champion. Greg Jeffries is a semi-hero, not a champion. So it's going to be outfield drama. Outfield drama. Roll 2d6. And it's a 3-4. Three, 3-4, four. Three, four, left fielder, iron. Oh, no, I don't think that, that uh, Barry Bonds is iron. He's out there in left field. Let's just check. No, he's actually gold. He's the opposite of iron. So it's a 3 4. No. Nope. So otherwise, easy fly out. And Barry Bonds is there to put it away. So the Mets pick up a run on two singles. And it's 4 to 2 now in the bottom of the fourth. Bobby Ojeda is still in there for the Mets. <clears throat> I was going to actually pinch hit for him. And now I remember that. But since I hadn't played in a couple of days, I forgot what I wanted to do. But anyway, okay, let's see if he can get through an inning. Give us an extra inning. I already, Now that I remember, I already had a pitcher set up and I had a pinch hit on everything. All right, what are you going to do? And that was a 3-4 in the outfield. Whoa. And really, the main pages are pages four and five. That's where most of the results come from. All right, a two, four, six, and a blank. So uh, let's put that there so we can turn the book. Two, four, six, and that's a control. Ask me if he is control. semi-controlled. The side of dice says no, there is no bullet. So we go to two, four, six on eager or sad sack. The batter is he eager or sad sack? Who's batting? It's Neil Heaton. He's probably eager. Most pitchers are. Oh, not this one, but he is a sad sack. So he's going to pop out to the left side. It's Greg Jeffries right there. Puts it away. One down. All right. That's going to be the top of the order. RJ, RJ Reynolds. And it's a 2 4 5. With a blank, two, four, five under pitcher is a blank. Ask me if RJ is a hero, and he is not. So it's popped up, middle of the infield, second baseman, Tommy Hur over, and he makes the catch. That's two outs, and then it becomes red. So that tells you that now we're gonna play it on the red result for, which is the player experience chart. Gonna throw through 2d6 and that's a 25 icon batter he's not an icon so that's a no so it's a line out to third base so it's hit right on the screws but snagged by the third baseman jeffries to retire the side so easy inning for bobby ojita bobby o oh got some issues going on here as you can see, I got some marks on my hand because uh, I kind of wrestled my dog today. How we were kind of approached by a a, uh, a shepherd, a German shepherd, and my dog's a husky, and he just became very, very protective and very ferocious. And I kind of grabbed him with both arms and tried to get my my body between the German shepherd that was vis coming to see us, which really wasn't aggressive at all. But how did my dog know that? So I was just trying to control my dog, and I kind of fell over, lost my balance, and uh, got scraped up a little bit. No big deal. Daryl Strawberry. And Strawberry, so far today, he struck out and walked in the third. Struck out in the first, walked in the third. Here he is in the fifth. All right. Oh, don't know what I'm doing. 
because we are not in the player experience chart. We already used that. Correct. L5. There was an L flying out to the third baseman. Yeah, we already used that pop out. And then we did the player experience chart, and that was a line out to third base. There it is. All right. That's why you got You can't get. You got to focus on what you're doing. You can't really get distracted. Okay. Here's the pitch to Daryl Strawberry. So it's a three, four, six. Three, four, six is a blank. Eager. Ask me if he's eager. He is not. So it's going to be a base on balls, and he is not active, so he will not steal. So this is uh, Daryl's second walk of the game. And that's going to take us to the purple, which is, uh, it, yep, purple. It's going to be chemistry. So we're going to roll 2d6 there. See what happens. Next batter is chemistry. All right, it's going to be a 4-4, pitching team dissonant. And pitching team dissonant, no, not dissonant. Otherwise, it's a deep fly to center field. So you list one to center. R.J. Reynolds parks under it. And that is one away. Back to first goes Strawberry. Here is Hojo. Howard Johnson. He's a semi-utility, a slugger, and a semi-whiffer. That's a 3-5-5. With a blank and a three five five is a struggler. Ask me if the pitcher is a struggler. No. Is the batter a champion? No. So it's a ground ball to second base unless he's a whiffer. He's a semi whiffer. Decided die says no. So we're gonna have to check fielder's choice. So it's a ground ball to the second baseman. And that is Jose Lind who flips to the shortstop. Jay Bell. For the force. Johnson's on it first now. And up comes Daryl Boston. Daryl Boston is the center fielder, and he doubled in the second inning. He actually won for two. Here's a pitch. That's are down by two runs in the top of the fifth inning. So it's going to be a 136 and a bullet. We're going to go to this page here, 136. And the 136 reads, ask me if he's an ace. He is not an ace. Whiffer or cold? Let me see. Daryl Boston. Oh, Daryl Boston is actually, uh, he is, he was a cold batter, so he strikes out. He was a cold batter for the game. All right, so that retires the side. We go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Remember, this is a three-inning learn to play. Kind of you play through it with me. And it's going to be Jeff King, Bobby Bonilla, and Barry Bonds against Bobby O. There is uh, Innes is throwing in the bullpen. That's a 123. And a 123, both flash and fresh. Well, he's semi, he's semi fresh, but there's no decided die. So the answer to that is no. 123 and a 123 is going to be a Hard hit ground ball to the shortstop and covering the ground is who's out there? He's Pojo and he throws him out of first. 6 3. So King rounds out and here comes Bobby Bow. Now Bobby Bow is has a two run home run. He's one for two today. That's a 266 and a 266 run around first. No lead off batter. No fly out to deep right field. Back goes Strawberry to the track and makes the catch. Two down. And here's Barry Bonds. That's a 116, and that's fresh. He's semi fresh. Decided that says he still is fresh. So he strikes out Barry Bonds to retire the side. No runs. No hits. And we go to the top of the sixth inning. 
We are playing history maker baseball. It's Neil Heaton versus Bobby Ojeda, circa 1990. Where were you in 1990? What were you doing? I was in college. I was still in finishing college. I think it was my, I think I went into a second program. I was working, finishing college. My daughter was small. Uh, I, I, that's what I do a lot of times with these seasons. I think back, what was I doing? Where was I? So uh, Charlie O'Brien leading off, and then we're going to get a pinch hitter. And that's a 256. 256, a struggler. Heaton is not a struggler. Champion. Batter is definitely not a champion or patient. He's neither. So it's infield drama. All right, so infield drama. Take this right here. Throw to D6, and it's a 56, and a 56, first baseman gold. Otherwise, this ball sails over his head for an error. Leaping grab, poor throw from infielder. And he is a righty, so we'll say it was to the shortstop. Otherwise, ball sails overhead, batter safe at first on error. So it's the first baseman gold. Who is the first baseman for the Pirates? It is Carlos Martinez. I don't think he's gold, but we'll check. No, Carmelo, excuse me. Carmelo, and he is not gold. So it's going to be, he's not able to range for that ball. And that's going to allow a base runner. The shortstop is going to be charged for an error. And here comes the pitcher spot. And we will get a pinch hitter. Neil Heaton is a lefty, so we're going to get uh, Pat Tabler to pinch hit. All right. It's Pat Tabler. We're going to run around first. So Tabler is uh, – so that was a, an error on the – oh, so then we're going to go to chemistry, I believe. I'm pretty sure there was a chemistry result. Most – almost every result is a chemistry result, so it had to be a chemistry result because we did get the error there. It was – asked me if the first baseman was – First baseman, gold, it was. That was a question. First baseman, gold. So it was, yep, I got to go to chemistry. So I'm right about that. That's good. So that's the purple result. When it has a purple result, you got to go to the chemistry. So we're going to roll 2d6 just uh and see what happens. Pat Tabler, pinch hit. Oh, actually, if there's a pinch hitter, that gets wiped down. and just use the regular board. That reminds me. Yeah. I believe that's the rule. So double check that in your own set if you get it. It's not important enough to me. I think that's the rule. So let's roll and let's see what happens on the regular chart. And it's a 3-3-4 three, three, with no bullet. 3-3-4. Three, three, and we're going to say a 3-3-4 three, three, is an ace or a star. He's semi-star. The side of die says he's not a star. Sad sack. Pat, Pat Tabler is not a sad sack, so he lines one to left. It has an eager flag, but he's not eager. So he lines a base hit to left field, and runners advance two bases on any hit. So over to third goes O'Brien, and Tabler single pinch hit single for Tabler. That puts runners on first and third for the Mets. There's some action in the bullpen for the Pirates. <clears throat> But he was uh, uh, pretty much uh, an ace, so he would go some innings for them. We're only in the sixth inning, nobody out, but runners on first and third. Scores four to two, Pirates in the top of the sixth. So it's going to be Tommy Herr. We're going to play the infield halfway, looking for the double play. Let a run score. Here's the pitch. And let's see, 135. Okay, I'm glad I rolled this because this is the key number here to rare plays, unusual events, and so forth. And that comes right here, 135, unusual result. So then what you do is you look at the colors and what you roll. I'll show you how to do that. 
uh, uh, okay, so there's a blue one right here. Blue one event chart. Umpire. Uh, okay, that's a, wait a second. That is a blue. So that means it's going to be uh, runners on first and third right here. Okay. So blue one. Blue one event. Runners on first and third. So I'm going to roll 2d6. And it's going to be a 36 and a 36. It's questionable umpire at home. He said he's questionable. Yes, he is. Ball four bases, uh, ball four, base on balls. So Joe West. Calls the ball outside and Neil Heaton is not happy about that call. Walking down at the first is Neil Heaton. Is uh is Tommy Hearn that loads the bases? Neil Heaton is is gonna be visited by his pitching coach right here with the bases loaded and nobody out. Time run is at second base now, and here comes Dave Magadin. Magadin singled in a run. He's one for three. He doubled hit into a double play in the first, struck out in the third, and in the fourth, single home run. And he's up here with the bases loaded. And let's take a quick peek at the bullpen for the Pirates in this game. Okay. It's not this game. Next game. Let's go to the next game. Previous game. Let's see who they use. Um, they use Bob Kipper. So let's look at the bullpen for Bob Kipper. I should have him. He's available. He's a right, a righty. Magadin's a lefty. Bob Kipper. So I'm gonna leave. Uh, who's up next? Switch hitter, and then a lefty. So let's see who. If I have a lefty, let's see Ted Power. Ted Powers a righty. Doug Bear's a righty. Randy Kramer's a righty. Scott Ruskin is a lefty. Hmm. Scott Ruskin, let me see who pitched in the first game of oh, this double header for the Pirates. And then sometimes I'll go to the previous game to take a look. Now Zane Smith won a complete game. So let's go to the previous game that the Pirates had before the Mets. And see who pitched in that game. Yeah, it was against the Phillies and uh, Pirates. Ooh, they brought in a lot of pitchers in that one. Mike York, Bill Landrum, and Bob Patterson. I don't know if I have all those guys. I'm not going to worry too much about it. Uh, let me see. Do I have any of those guys available to me? Patterson. Who did I say? Uh, York, Patterson, and Landrum. I have Landrum. He's the closer. I have Power, I have Bear, I have Kramer, I have Ruskin, York, and Patterson. Sometimes I, I find those those players on other teams because they get traded. Oh, I do have Bob Patterson. He's a reliever. And I do have, no, I have Bob Patterson. He's a lefty. Oh, perfect. Look at that. All right. So I'm going to give uh, Neil, Neil Heaton the benefit of the doubt. And... Uh, so here comes Dave Magadan with the bases loaded. Mets are down by two. We're in the top of the sixth inning. We're playing history maker baseball. Kind of playing through the approach on how they play this game. All right, so they're going to leave Neil Heaton in there. Maybe one more batter. They got Bob Patterson, a lefty, in the bullpen. Just a regular chart, that's all I want right now. And here's a pitch, and that is a 134. A 134 with a blank, a 134 gold catcher. Not a gold catcher, a champion. He is a semi champion, unfortunately, for the Mets. It says no because there's no bullet there. If there was a bullet, he would be a champion. So it's going to be outfield drama. Okay, more excitement. 
more excitement. We already used this. We're going to throw it again. And it's a 1-5. A 1-5 says left fielder gold. He is gold. Makes a running stab of a sharp line drive fly out. With a 1, that may be a sacrifice fly. Let's see what it says. Uh, okay. Runners advance one. Uh, runners hold on fly outs. Oh, darn. All right. So it's a fly to left. And Barry Bonds got a good jump on that. Made a fine catch out there. And here comes Greg Jeffries. And field is halfway. Oh, and that result was going to be uh, so that was left fielder gold. Let me see the ball. Let me look for him. Left fielder, left fielder, iron, left fielder gold. Running stab, that's it, fly out. So he, it does go to the chemistry chart. It's purple, so we'll go to the chemistry chart for the next batter. And we are going to roll for Greg Jeffries with the bases loaded and only one out. So Mets have a terrific opportunity here to score some runs and tie up this game. It's going to be a 1-5 pitching team harmony. It is not. He is not, so... Otherwise, it's a bloop single. A bloop single, and we got, again, a one. Uh, so runners advance one base on hits. So it's four to three now. Score. A little blooper that drops in, and that will score O'Brien from third. Both runners move up, and the bases are loaded. And that brings up Daryl Strawberry. Again, we're going to, and this is going to take us to, what is that, a 1, that was a 1, 5. That's going to take us to the regular charts for Daryl Strawberry with the bases loaded. We're going to leave Neil Heaton in there. And let me, actually, let me check, because he may be a struggler now. He gave up, oh yeah, he's a struggler, yeah. Uh, no, 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 he's not, he got an out in between. Okay, so he's not, he's not a semi-struggler, he's still okay. Three, ba three consecutive batters, he becomes a semi-struggler. Four batters, he becomes uh, consecutively, he becomes a struggler. So he's okay. He's going to pitch to Daryl Strawberry. Base is loaded. He's walked Daryl Strawberry twice. He's been very, very careful pitching to, to Daryl the, the last two times. Daryl can do a lot of damage with one swing of the bat. He's got tremendous power. He's a home run king. And we're going to bring in a new pitcher because he's going to become an ace to the first batter. So we're going to – and out comes the manager. He's going to go to the bullpen, and we're going to get Bob Patterson. Going to replace Heaton. So Bob Patterson, top of the sixth, with one out and the bases loaded. He's going to face Daryl Strawberry. Daryl Strawberry with one swing of the bat can give him the next lead. So here goes. It's a 3-4-4 four, four. and a blank. Let's see what happens. Prospect. Daryl Strawberry is an icon. Oh, no, they asked me about the pitcher. Uh, he's experienced. He doesn't have any. So we're going to go to patient. Uh, is he a patient? He's not patient. So it's going to be popped up. And it's going to be the infield second baseman. Jose Land is right there. For out number two. And here comes Kevin McReynolds. And this is where we're going to bring in, go to the bullpen again and bring in Bob Kipper. And he's going to become an ace for one batter. So that's all for Patterson. There's no three batter rule in 1990. So Bob, Bob Patterson did his job, and he's going to be Bob Kipper. And uh, Bob Kipper may have to bat. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's do it.
Kevin McReynolds, bases loaded, two outs, top of the sixth inning. Learn to play History Maker Baseball. It's a 133 with a bullet. So let's see if this works out for the Mets. 133 says a blank on the pitcher. That's an advantage. Slugger. Oh, he's a semi-home run king. Um, and there is a rule about that. Uh, I don't know that. I can't remember if there's a rule about that. Let me see. Let me see if I can find one. I got the rules right here. Let me see what it says here about Home Run King. Hold on a second. Um, one, two, three. Home Run King hits the home run. No, I think. Yeah, he's not going to get credit for that. No, not going to get credit for that. So that's going to, unfortunately, he's actually too good, but not good enough to have, get credit for the slugger as well. So 133. Oh, man. So 133 says slugger home run. He's not a slugger. He's a home, semi-home run king. He's a home run king. So it's going to be a deep fly ball to left center field. Barry Bonds to the track and makes the catch, and that retires the side. And nowhere in the rules. So unfortunately, the Mets, bases loaded, nobody out, failed to come through. He's not a home run legend. If he was a home run legend, he'd get credit for that. But no, I don't see anything for a home run king. Usually you'll have the three little asterisks right there. See that? And that'll basically say that if he hits a double to center or if he's a home run king, he hits a home run. But that does not have it there. So there's no home run. It's a deep fly ball for an out. And Mets had a terrific opportunity to score some runs but failed to do so. And we have a new pitcher here for the bottom of the sixth inning. This will be the last inning of the replay of, well, of the of the playthrough. It's going to be uh, Innes. Jeff Innes is coming in to face Carmelo Martinez. Um, who is that? Uh, oh, Don Slot and Jose Lynn. All right, here's the pitch, Jeff Innes. So 144. So 144 flash, he did not flash. Hero, Carlo Carmelo is not a hero, so it's a ground ball to short, unless he's a whiffer, and he's not a whiffer, so it's a ground ball to the shortstop, Howard Johnson. Throws him out at first, one down. So 126. 126 and a blank. 120 fresh. He is fresh. So Jose Lynn hits it on the screws and lines it to the second baseman. Line drive caught by the second baseman. Tommy Her, the right place at the right time. Tommy Her, I remember him from the Cardinals. And here we go, Jose Lynn. Jose, so down. Uh, wait, that should have been Jose. Hold on, my mistake. It happened off the, the, the pitcher card anyway, so it didn't matter, but that was not. That was uh, Jose Lynn. Hold on, Carmelo. Don Slot lined out. So that was a, Don Slot lined out, and now it's Jose Lynn. My bad. There you go. All right, I played another series of games on top of this board. And the other cards from the other game system. I'm playing a tourney, uh, uh, lovable loser tourney. And um, 
so so they've got messed up. I think I dropped some cards. I had to pick them all up and organize them all. All right, so Jose Lynn. Jose Lynn today is grounded out and struck out. In the first game, he hit a home run, a two-run home run, I believe. All right, so here's Jeff Innes with two outs against Jose Lynn. And it's a 4-5-6 and a decided die, 4-5-6. Now we're going to go to 4-5-6. It's a blank against a pitcher, patient. He's not patient. It's going to be a five-ball center field to retire the side. But the next batter for the Mets will be in the chemistry mini chart. And we want to get that because if I don't do that, I'll forget. I just want to get that. And we're going to extend this just a little bit. Remember, it's Bob Kipper on the mound for the Pirates. Against Hojo. So we're starting on the team chemistry chart. Let's do that. It's a 66 batting team harmony. Uh, they are dissonant, so no. Otherwise, it's a strikeout. So he swings and misses at a pitch outside the zone for out number one. It's four to two here in the top of the seventh inning. We'll play this half inning. Here's Daryl Boston. Boston has doubled him to a few of his choice and struck out. It's a four six six with a blank. Four six six. And that's right here. It asked me if the pitcher control. He is not. Home run king or slugger. Boy, I need that before. He is a semi slugger, but the decided die says no, because it's not there. So it's a difficult ground ball up the middle, and the second baseman gets to it, sets his feet. And Jose Lynn with a very nice throw right on the money there. Tough grounder, handles that well. And here's Charlie O'Brien with two outs. And it's a 3 4 4 with, with a decided die. 3 4 4. Prospect is the pitcher of prospect. He is not, he's semi icon. Patient, batter is not patient. So it's popped up. By the bag at second base, and it's going to be Jose Lynn to retire the side. Oh, wait, the Mets did pick up a run in that inning on that single, so I made a mistake. I, I did not go over that. So, the Mets in the sixth inning picked up a run uh, in that inning where I thought that they did not pick up a run. I never bothered to look at the scoreboard, I was too involved in everything else. So, it, it, then in the bottom of the sixth, it was three up and three down. So we're in the, and that was three up and three down at the top of the seventh. The score is four to three Mets. So they did, did pick up one run. I made a mistake earlier. And we go to the bottom of the seventh inning. And it's going to be the pitcher leading off. So we're probably going to see a pinch hitter. Probably going to see a pinch hitter. Oh, no, I don't want to do that anymore. I'm doing this a different way now with pinch hitters. Putting a straight line across it. I saw somebody else doing it. I really liked it. And uh, so it's a 4 3 ball game. It's a pretty good ball game. I'm going to play a little bit more. Uh, let's see. Head game. Let's see who. Uh, Andy Vance Slight. Andy Van Slyke is going to come in and pinch hit. Against the righty, Innes. So the pitcher's up, pitcher spot, but it's going to be Van Slyke, pinch hitter. Bottom of the seventh inning, it's a four to three.
pirate lead. And uh, we're playing History Maker Baseball. Let's do it. Jeff Finn is still on the mound for the Mets. It's a 2 3 4. You read lowest to highest, 2 3 4, with a blank decider. 2 3 4, runner on base. Nope. Hot batter. And it's like just came in, not a hot batter. So it's going to be popped up. On the left side. Third baseman Greg Jeffries over and foul ground reaches into the stands and brings it back out. What a play! Greg Jeffries one away. That is definitely a star defensive play. All right, here is RJ Reynolds switch hitter, and that's a 2 4 4 with no decider tie, no bullet. So it's a 244 ace. He is a semi ace, but no. Champion. Batter is not a champion, so it's going to be a hard hit ground ball in the hole. Long throw for Hojo, and he makes the play. Nice stretch by the first baseman, Dave Magadan. And here comes Jay Bell. Jay Bell. Uh, today is 0 for 3. He popped up, grabbed it out, and lined out. Two outs, bottom of the seventh, four to three Pirates. It's so a 3 5 6. And a 3 5 6, the same. Innis throws from the right side, Bell bats from the right side. So that's strike three, and he retires the side. No runs, no hits. So we got a top of the eighth inning, four to three. Pirates. Pirates are going to have a new pitcher. It's going to be Power, Ted Power. And the Mets are going to have a pinch hitter as well. So Innes is out, Tabler's out. Let's see who the Mets were using in these games for pinch hitters and all that. Nineteen ninety, the end of an era. This is pretty much the last year, and they still have a couple of names I think uh, that remain from that '86 team. We're going to bring in Keith Miller to hit. Keith Miller is going to pinch hit, and the new pitcher is going to be Ted Power. Comes in on the top of the eighth. Oh boy. All right, so it's going to be who do we say? Is Keith Miller? K M. Pinch hit. And let's do this. The Ted Power against Keith Miller. And it's a 2 3 6 with a bullet. 2 3 6 is going to say double control. No, he does not have double control. So a 2 3 6 pitcher batting. No, so it's going to be a base on balls. So Miller walks, pinch hitter. Keith Miller walks in the all right. We got a runner. The tying run is on base. Miller is semi-active, which is not a bad thing. And here is Tommy Herr. Tommy Herr is gonna bunt. So how do you bunt? The chart is right here. Nope, the chart is right there. 
All right, so let's throw 1d6. And it says a four, four, five, or six out of first runner's advance. So it's, the pitcher gets it. And the tying run is at second base now on the one four sacrifice by Tommy Herr. And here comes Dave Magadan. Magadan today is one for four with an RBI single. We're in scoring position now. Tying run at second base. And here goes. It's a three, four, five. And a three, four, five. Ask me three, four, five. Says is, is the catcher iron? Let me just uh, check. Uh, no, not iron. There's nothing. It's both these catchers are just blanks. Three, four, five. Then it asked me if, if the batter is a good eye. He's not a good eye. So that's going to be a strikeout. It's going to take us to the right now chart. Two outs. And up comes Greg Jeffries in the right now chart. Let's do it. Let's see what happens. It's a 26. And a 26 hot pitcher. He is hot because he just struck out the last batter. So overpowers batter with his best pitch. Strike three. And he retires the side back to back K's for power. So he walks the first man and then strikes out the last two to end the inning. No runs, no hits. And we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. So the Mets are going to have a new pitcher. It's going to be Jeff King, Bobby Bonilla, and Barry Bonds. And we'll take a quick peek at who the Mets are going to bring in. And they're going to bring in Wally Whitehurst. Wally Whitehurst. One one six plus the bullet. One one six, and he is fresh, so he strikes out King. One out. Bobby Bo is up next. He's one for three with a two-run home run, and it's a two three five with a bullet. Two three five. Wild. Uh, he's not wild. He's actually the opposite. Eager. He's semi-eager. The side of the die says he is eager. So that's a base, unless he's a whiffer. And he is a whiffer, so that he strikes out. All right. So I don't believe I roll again for that because there were two questions for the bullet. And I don't believe I roll again for that. There was, uh, there was both two yeses for the same bullet. And I'm not sure if it gets, if you use one, you may have to roll for the second one. Let me see if that's anywhere here. I can't totally remember that. Let's see if that's in your clarifications. Good eye. Uh, active steals, runner. Writing out to guys, uh, simplified empires. Somebody had it right now. Rules base running, like a chart, ready to charge wrong with tangibles right now. And let's see if it says anything about the situational qualities. Now. I use the bullet symbol 
Players can be assigned half or semi qualities. For example, a player could be rated semi pro, which means the hero quality comes up after batting column. Half the time he's going to have a hero quality, half the time he won't. Our own, uh, on our own cards, we use the bullet symbol to indicate the player has a semi or half quality. Corresponds to the bullet on the decided die. When the decided die shows bullet, I don't remember if I roll, I have to roll that again. All right, so let's let's roll the bullet on on the bullet. I have I roll it again. No bullet, I don't roll it again. Okay, I don't roll it again. In the sword, fair. I don't want to give myself an advantage or a disadvantage. So that will be a strikeout, right? Two, three, five. That was Barry Bonds. Two, three, five. Eager, yes, but he's also a whiffer. So let's see what that says. Batter strikes out. Got to find out. I will. So he retires the side, three up and three down. Strikes out the side. Whitehurst, Wally Whitehurst does. And... Um, Dow Strawberry. Let's bring in the closer for the Pirates to finish this off. Finish off the Mets here. Four to three in the top of the ninth inning. So the closer is going to be a guy named Bill Landrum. Bill Landrum is the closer. He's going to come in, finish it off. He's going to face uh, Dow Strawberry, Kevin McReynolds, and Howard Johnson. And he is their closer. Yep. So here it goes. Here's the pitch to Dow. So 125, 125 struggler. No. Not a patient. Better patient. No. Ground ball, third base, unless he's a whiffer. He is a whiffer, so he strikes out. Well, Strawberry goes down on strikes. That's her down to the last two outs. Kevin McReynolds, all they need is a home run here to tie up the ball game. And that's a 4-4-5. Four, 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 he's a workman. Nope, pitcher's not a workman. Patient, batter, nope. Ground ball, chop to the first baseman. And right there is Carmelo Martinez for out number two. Mets are down to the last out. It's Hojo, he's got power, he's a slugger. See if he can get, drive one, find a pitch he can drive. Here's a pitch from Landrum, the closer. So 124, 124. And that's going to be control. He is control. So it's chopped to the shortstop who charges in, makes the throw to first. Ball game over. Pirates beat the Mets. They take both games of a doubleheader. No runs, no hits. In the top of the ninth for the Mets, they lose it by a score of four to three. And uh, that's about it. So this is that's how you play uh, History Maker Baseball, and of course, questions are, you know arise. Uh, not, you know, I don't know everything about the game. I, I still uh, always learning something different, and I, I totally don't remember. I know I saw it somewhere about the bullet, uh, and I don't remember. I think I, I, I'm not totally sure, but once you use it, I think you use it, and then you got to roll again. But it doesn't make sense to me. Why would you have to roll again on the same in the same list of results? But I think you do roll again. But in that case, I just roll to decide. And the decider die said, don't roll again. End the story until I see it in print, and then I'll know for sure. Either way, Mets lose it. It wasn't a life or death type of situation where the Mets won it because of that play. It was just, it was two outs. It was a strikeout or not a strikeout. It made a problem in an out anyway. I don't remember where that was. But it would probably would have been a strikeout. Uh, 
Oh, it was it was either a single or a strikeout. Um, so it could have been a single, but with two outs, a single, and the Mets were down anyway. So anyway, this is Cards and Dice TV. This is your host Tony Porter. Thanks for watching my presentation of History Maker Baseball. Went a bit long, but I hope you enjoyed the game. Mets unfortunately lose the second game of the doubleheader. They lost both ends of the doubleheader. And they can play one more game against the Pirates. And uh, and we'll see if we get back to, to present that one, to stream that. I don't know. We'll see.